Do you have a do you have a favorite Whitney song? What is your favorite Whitney? I actually so I love uh I wanna dance with somebody. I also though well I was around when Brandy and her did Cinderella and there was no oh. We had the opportunity to sit down with actress Chris Sedberry to talk about her role as Pat Houston in the new Whitney Houston biopic, I Wanna Dance with Somebody. And here's what she had to say. Check it out. What's going on, everyone? My next guest, uh, listen, she hails from Nashville, but you can catch her all over the place in projects such as Hulu's Castle Rock, HBO Max's Julia, and uh, Catherine Bigelow's Detroit, which is one of my favorites. But this weekend, December 23rd, you're about to see her, and I want to dance with somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Sibberry, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm good now. I'm good. We finally get to talk. We finally get to chop it up. I know yeah. you You had an amazing week last week because you, you have to talk to me. You have to tell me about the awesome premiere for I Want to Dance with Somebody before we get into all the good stuff. How was the premiere? It was um a dream. I like uh I didn't <laughs> I one I can't believe it was a week ago because it was a week ago today. Yeah. Um uh, it was uh like you know, the these are the things like, oh, you're a little kid and you're like, oh, it's gonna happen. And then you get older and you're like, it's okay, probably not gonna have anything <laughs> like that happen. <laughs> but so let's let's talk about I wanna dance with somebody and you play a very important character in Whitney's life, who was her manager, uh, Pat Houston. Tell us, tell us about taking on that role and the importance of it for you, because it's it's a very iconic role of, of, in itself. So, talk about your process and trying to make make this authentic. Mm. Well, one, it, it's pretty hard because uh, she is a fairly private person. Other than there's a TV show that was on for like one season um but that's about it like it's even hard to find early pat stuff but mm. she was a model back in the day when she met gary um so i really only had stuff that's more recent um which is hard because her uh, who knows what her personality when I mean, she was a model back then and she's wow. a very um private demure uh i wouldn't say not demure is not the word um she's very kind and like but but still um not the most verbose person right like yeah. which was probably a wonderful pairing with Whitney like she was in the background managing and and probably was very fine with that yeah um and a big thing I guess with acting you can't um mock people right yeah so like get their essence I let hair makeup and wardrobe do their thing mm -hmm. and then let it fly <laughs> so that must, that must have been like nerve-wracking for you because like she's like on the sidelines while you're like doing your thing like was she there a lot yeah. wow not a lot she wasn't there a lot and then sometimes I mean there she might have been there times other times that I didn't know and everyone was she was very nice about it and I'm obviously so nerve-wracking right yeah yeah um then once I met her, she was like very chill and sweet. Uh, and then you learn to kind of appreciate those moments, mm -hmm. right? Because I don't want on the back end try to be like, I wouldn't say that. And I wouldn't, you know, or like people that know her be like, oh, she wouldn't, Pat wouldn't cuss like that. Or like, it only helps <laughs> me and everyone else <laughs> to like know before we shoot. Also very hard to play people who are alive. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she would come on set, but my very first time meeting her, learning she was on set and then we're sitting in this private private plane um and uh over the walkie they're like um so we need to get chris new clothes because <laughs> are they well, i was in this like very short skirt very short and had no, oh. no panties on and it was like yeah pat wouldn't wear that so we need to stop shoot like and <laughs> go get me <laughs> what wow <laughs> and, then and then we'd be like then the next thing was like um the director comes in. She's like, hey, Chris, uh, can you not cuss in this line? Because Pat doesn't cuss. <laughs> and, and now you, you mentioned that there were people there that probably know her or did know her. Was there anything that you learned about the relationship between Pat and and, and Whitney that kind of kind of shocked you? No spoilers, but just anything that, you know, do storytelling and them kind of just talking on the sideline. 
Not really, to be honest with you. And there wasn't a lot. Like, I mean, and she's like pretty, I didn't even know much about the modeling stuff. And it was the girl that was on the costume team. Her ability to research was incredible because I looked for a long time and didn't see those photos. And even the hair, like not everyone had the photos that she had, but yeah. um, the, her modeling crew, she was gorgeous. Um, she still is. And she's very tall and like, which I'm not, which I thought was interesting. I'm me and uh, Naomi are like the same height. Pat is <laughs> very tall, but no, not, um, again pretty private person um and the girl that did my makeup was whitney's personal makeup artist and pass wow. which is pretty awesome to have that and even she was like very kind she does her makeup the same pretty much always red lips uh semi smoky eye but like very quiet and kind of just keeps to herself she tore it up on the dance floor, though, at one of the, the after parties. <laughs> so there's so like in her somewhere. <laughs> now, I want to talk about, well, the closest we've gotten to, you know, Winnie is, you know, the performance, the, the brilliant performance from Naomi Aki, who voice tone wise, when she's speaking, is chilling because she sounds just yeah. like Whitney. Yeah. Tell me what it was like, you know, working opposite of her and. I don't know, just how, how, how was that, that, that whole experience? Was it surreal? No, she's so much fun. We're both yeah. very dorky. We love Harry Potter. So like, and she's <laughs> so like, so impressive because she'd like be in a scene and then we just kiki, like, like I, because <laughs> like, I, I, mean, I didn't have nearly as much to do as she did. So yeah. like, see her like, just be in it like we would be out uh there's a scene and they cut a lot of it they cut so much um oh. but yeah yeah um, which we knew i mean like there's a whole bot um uh eddie murphy storyline a lot of people don't know that whitney and eddie dated and wow all of that so this will come out uh, well enough right before and i'm sure they'll talk about yeah. this but uh yeah uh, yeah, just we would be out there like just singing. We we would do this like if we were rich white women, we would have this. Don't talk to me, Ronald. Like we would like, <laughs> be like going to set, going back and forth. It was so much fun. Yeah. Um, and when you, I have not. I, I've had the pleasure on the stage to lead a show, but when you're leading a production like that, you have to yeah. read lead right like yeah. if the, the lead of the show comes in with a bad attitude and is tired or whatever that makes everybody else's day rough yeah and she was and that they that girl they worked her so hard she barely got a day off because when oh. you have on her days off they were rehearsing her the the choreography the performances yeah wow so were you there did you get to watch a lot of it uh, uh, you know no, I, I try to like, if, if I'm not there, get out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't there for a lot of the performance scenes. I wish okay. that I would, but I knew that those was, were going to be a lot because they were going to have to deal with background dancers. Yeah. And the band. So like if, if I was on set and they were shooting other scenes, like I had a scene the first part of the day and not the end, I'll stay for that. Yeah. And like, well, if, it, if I'm not due on set, so so then so it's fair to say that the premiere was like a surprise to you. So it was like the first time you got to see anything. Surprise what was the, what was that experience like for you to actually see yourself in this world and you know bringing this historic story to life? Like, how how was it for you? Well, wild because it's diff very different than what we read. <laughs> so, <laughs> which a little bit okay. So I will be on. So I knew a lot of stuff that would be taken out because we had to do reshoots in LA not that long ago. Yeah, and the costume team has to watch everything because if they have to pull from stock. Okay. So the costumes and stuff. So I knew uh, a little bit, but it's still such a surprise. And like also like seeing your face on a little monitor versus seeing your face on a massive screen. Yeah. Like I see my actors don't want to watch. Like, so a lot of actors will, they'll walk the red carpet and then they'll leave. Yeah. And then they'll come back for the after party. And I see why. Cause you just sit there and like pick everything apart. <laughs> like the first time you watch it, you don't watch it. Yeah. 
you're just looking for imperfections and yeah. being your own worst critic. <laughs> Absolutely. Or, oh no, my scene, let's see my, that one scene is gone or, oh no, like, oh my gosh, my friend, I'm don't, I hope they don't ask me if they made it because they have friends in it that they're, they're completely out now. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of hard. And, and wow. you would think production tells you that stuff and they don't always, they don't always contact you. So who else, did, were there any other surprises that kind of popped up on set? Like um, like you, like maybe Bobby Brown or someone or someone that kind of, no, really? I, I don't know. I wonder, yeah, I don't know how close he is with, I don't actually don't know how close he is with the family <laughs> still. Um, and I know for Ashton, they didn't, I don't think they even talked uh, okay. who plays Bobby. Bobby, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I don't know how, what his approval will be. Actually, I think they did a really good job of telling maybe the truth of the story. Mm -hmm. Um, Because Bobby was a drinker, not the one on drugs. And he gets blamed for a lot of that. Yeah. And uh, I think it, it does a, a better job of like, talking a little uh not not there's no whole scenes about it but it shows it yeah um yeah and, and I, I wanted to ask you this um the last time we had spoken um it was about the fact that you're in a period piece because a, a lot of your work stems from working in a lot of the period pieces um is that something that you are drawn to that you enjoy doing is like going back to times that were and kind of bringing those stories forth that's my favorite i love period yeah. work yeah. yeah. I'm uh, also, too, I'm, that probably is a little bit of my sensibilities being a stage actor. Okay. I think. Um, yeah, because of the costume is way better. Like you, when you, if you put on stuff that you like, not only don't get to wear every day, but you don't even have access to really, right? Yeah, yeah. It makes it totally get to dive into another world, and you get to see cars you don't see, and fun props and like it's just so much imagination when it's not like your everyday I'm not that I'm listen if anyone's listening I'm not going to turn down <laughs> anything that's right now. <laughs> like I would much rather delve into worlds that are either no longer or don't exist in this world at all so I got into this <laughs> so I want to ask you one last question because I know you kind of answered it but I want to hear in your own words you've seen it you you were there what is the one thing you think that the audiences are going to take from this very this this version of Whitney's life story? And what is the what is the one thing that you hope that they take? Uh I hope that people understand that like even people who do great things because that's if it's not even she didn't set out actually to do this at all like it she was fine being background for her mom thought that's what her career was going to be like mm -hmm. um and that uh she became a legend but like that necessarily wasn't her intent nor uh, really that, that she's human we we like sometimes and when we we look through history with these rose colored glasses of oh they're so amazing and great and like she must have been hustling and like doing all these things and it puts up a wall for younger people to like well I can't do that or I'm do you know what I'm when we put mm. like uh, legends on pedestals their their lives yeah. are attainable and she was a very fallible very talented um, very uh, complicated human. Yeah. Like we all are, we all make huge mistakes in life. And um, I think that some of us obviously bounce back better than others, but they're like that, she had a lot of pressure on her shoulders. And I, I, we see that a lot right now with Twitch just passing, like yeah. um, every things can look like someone has it all, but we're all just so human. And I think if we like, recognize that a little bit more in people even our legends life would be a lot better for us for everyone absolutely do you have a do you have a favorite Whitney song what is your favorite Whitney it's so funny that they asked that so much on the red carpet <laughs> <laughs> that was like the number one I actually so I love 
uh, I want to dance with somebody. I also, though, well, I was around when Brandy and her did Cinderella, and there was no oh. brown Cinderellas or brown fairy godmothers. So that meant something to me. But I do remember a little bit. So I discovered Whitney a little bit later just because of age, right? I was like maybe four when she kind of really started to come out. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember because she was one of the first black people to like really be on MTV. Yeah. Even though their whole, there was a whole time when MTV wasn't featuring many people of color. Yeah, I think it was her and Michael. <laughs> her, <laughs> exactly. And so that was nice to see, uh, which is funny because they both are more uh, rock and both criticized for not being black enough, mm. um, which I have experienced my whole life too. So I remember being like, oh, the one person that looks like me. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's on there. But so I would say I want to dance with somebody because I, I re remember the music video. Yeah. Um, and, Brand and, and the Cinderella movie. Probably yeah, I, I'm. I'm. A, I want to dance with somebody too, fair That's 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 my go-to. Yeah, if that comes on. I I gotta turn it up. You have to. I agree. Chris, I want. I want to. I want to absolutely thank you for taking the time to talk to me. It's been a pleasure. I'm so hyped to see this movie. I cannot wait to see it. Uh, you all, you heard it first. Uh, this thing is probably gonna touch a lot of hearts. Gonna make you cry. Gonna make you dance. I hope there's a lot of music in this thing. Uh, I want to dance with somebody. <laughs> it's coming out this weekend, December 23rd. Do not miss it. See it. Get all your friends. Get together. Go see it. Chris, I want to thank you. I can't wait to see your performance. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, no problem. Thank you.